Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Marianne. I live here in Canada with my husband and two kids, ages five and seven. And I make videos on simplifying life and motherhood through easy organization and decluttering. Last year, our family embarked on an experiment where we went 365 days without purchasing anything brand new or at least that was the goal. We called it our buy nothing new year and I thought this would be the perfect time to share a video about it because it is almost the end of this year and I know a lot of families like ours kind of do little challenges or experiments starting in the new year. So I thought this would be the perfect time to pour, sort of put the bug in your ear because maybe this could be a challenge that you and your family embark on for the next calendar year, so 2024. So today I'm sharing like what it was like, what went wrong, what we liked, what we didn't, and how it ended. So if that's something you're interested in, then keep watching for all the details. All right, so the, first of all, the main rules of the year, obviously, like I said, it's a buy nothing new year. So we were still buying things so we could buy all of our consumables. We could still go out for dinner. We could still obviously pay for all of our, our day-to-day -day expenses. And we could also buy things. However, anything we bought had to be secondhand thrifted. So why the heck did we do this? <laughs> good question. First of all, I just love a good challenge. Every single year, our family has done sort of like a little goal or had a little challenge or something that we've kind of tried to stick to for an entire year. Over the years, we've done tons of like buy nothing months. So that's where we go for 30 days. Um, and we don't buy anything at all other than again like our regular expenses that we have to pay they had made such a huge difference in our lives and like in our spending and in kind of just how we operate so i thought why not take this sort of like a step further and do an entire year i would have loved to do an entire year of like actually a no spend year so not buying anything other than necessities however i felt like that might be a bit much for our family our kids were still kind of little our kids were around four and five and I just felt like I wasn't quite ready to commit to that. So I thought this was like a happy medium. I had three main goals for the challenge. Number one was to save money. So like I said, we had done no spend months before and that was obviously the goal of those. We obviously were still gonna be spending money, but in theory, um, only buying secondhand and restricting ourselves like kind of what we bought brand new in my mind was that we were going to save money and that was obviously going to be great. Goal number two was to control clutter. So we had already got our house to a really good state where I felt like we had a good amount of things in our house that felt good to us. But as you know, it's like a constant battle to keep those things out. So I thought by limiting, again, by restricting what we were purchasing and what we were buying and sort of changing our mindset on that, that we were gonna control how much was coming into the house and therefore make sure we didn't get back into the routine of having like a bunch of stuff come into the house every month. Goal number three was the environmental aspect. All those brand new items coming to the world, they take resources to make, um, they take resources to get to us. There's a lot of garbage. Typically there's a lot of garbage and waste associated with all that. And then you obviously have this end product, which like how long are you gonna use this for? Where is it going to get, where is it going to land um, when you're done with it? So as a professional organizer, um, I see a lot of garbage i see a lot of waste i see what happens to items as they go through like the cycle of use how long things last all that sort of stuff that was a topic that was on my mind a lot lately so i thought this again by buying only secondhand this was like a good way to kind of like do like our little something um for the planet <laughs> was i nervous for this yes did i think we were going to succeed not really i honestly did not know what to expect a bit of it was just a fly by seat of our pants to figure it out i didn't have an exact plan for what we were going to do but there were definitely some specific lessons that we learned along the way which I want to share with you lesson number one was we gained so much time so this is something I did not factor into my plan it wasn't one of our goals really the focus was more on the money saving aspect but holy cow we saved so much time and like even just like mental energy by not thinking about buying stuff, considering buying stuff, going to the mall to buy stuff, wondering if we can afford to buy stuff. Like it's just all these decisions and all this energy and time that we spent going and buying things just sort of disappeared. We had all this 
extra time. And even for a family like us that I feel like we weren't huge shoppers to begin with, I feel like just eliminating that and knowing that like this year we're sort of taking a break, we're giving ourselves like space and time to not deal with that and have we had so much energy and time for other things and being in such a busy time in our lives with both of us working full time and having young kids how much time we saved was 100 worth it just for that lesson number two was not as fun and that was that we still spent a ton of money so i mean when i say a ton of money it's all relative it's not like we went out and you know broke the bank and spent every dollar we have that's not the case at all however it's also not like we all of a sudden saved we all of a sudden have like 20 extra thousand dollars um, at the end of the year i will say if i did the challenge again i would track this so i would track maybe like what we bought secondhand com and compared to what it would have cost brand new or tracked maybe items that we wanted to buy but ended up not buying because we weren't able to find them because I'd be interested to see how much money we actually did kind of save throughout the year. It does make me want to do a no spend year where we buy nothing except necessities and to see how much money that saves. Lesson number three was that it was tiring and not tiring from like having to try to research items to find because like I said, they were pretty easy to find. It was more like exhausting because it felt like we were constantly going against the grain. Wanting something and going to the store and buying it is pretty typical. That's kind of how everyone operates and that's and that's how we've sort of operated um, our whole lives up until now. And doing things sort of different um, or against the grain or not what everyone else does is not probably my biggest strength. I typically like to like go with the flow, you know, <laughs> go under the radar, um, ruffling feathers and um, upsetting people. Um, being different, being like kind of an outcast is not really my thing. If you don't mind going against the grain, if you like love being the rebel of your group, then you're gonna do great in this challenge. But I will say that personally for me, that was definitely one of the lessons that I got tired of always having to sort of, to find an accommodation for still kind of doing the normal things of life, of family life, of social life, but doing them like in our own different way. But I do remember at the end of the year being like, I am tuckered out. Like that took a lot out of me. Was it tiring? Yes. Was it worth, was it still worth it? Absolutely. Next are I want to share the easiest categories of things that we were able to find secondhand. Our, our city has a ton of options for secondhand items. So I feel like be how much you could find really depends on your area. But there were three categories specifically that in our area I could basically find anything at any time and it was very easy. So category number one were kids clothes. Kids clothes. Oh my gosh, so easy. There are so many kids clothes in our area. Number one, I'm not super picky. I definitely do not care about brands. As long as it looks somewhat decent, I'm fine with it. And if they're happy and it's comfortable, um, that's really all that matters to me. I'm pretty sure there are enough kids clothes in this on this planet uh, to dress our children for the next 500 years. Like it is bananas how many kids clothes there are. I will say our kids were littler. So like four and five-ish sort of as this was happening, five T and under, kids clothes so easy to find. After that, it does get a little bit harder, especially like say for like pants, boys pants, size five and up, a little trickier. However, I did just buy a pair of snow pants for Leo that are size six, seven, that I think I paid $7 for, and they're cute and stylish and they're perfect. So although it maybe gets trickier as they get older, I still feel like there is a plethora of kids clothes in this world. Category number two that was easy to find are women's clothes. Again, I'm not overly picky. I'm not like out to win any fashion awards. And as I've changed jobs, my wardrobe is like really casual. We have like branded clothing that we wear for work every day. So really I only needed casual clothes for at home, for weekends, and you know, like the odd times gotten I go for dinner. So my needs are pretty low, but even so, I still feel like there is so many women's clothes. Like, Women's jeans, I feel like there's probably enough women's jeans to last us for a thousand years. And I didn't even have to get inventive. Like I think one time I ordered off Poshmark. Is it Poshmark? Um, but I think you have to pay shipping to Canada and it's like longer for Poshmark, I think. So like the odd time I would like go above and beyond and like actually 
look into what I was buying. But typically, if I want a pair of like a new pair of leggings, I go to the thrift store, I buy them. It's not a big deal. Um, or and I did also get a ton of stuff on uh, marketplace. Category number three that was so 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 easy to find were household items. Anything for the kitchen. If I want a crock pot right now, I could. I, there'd probably be five options in the city right now of used crock pots for me to buy. Probably 15 actually. Like household items, so, so, so easy. Furniture, we bought a ton of used furniture. I'm sitting on a couch that we just bought um, off marketplace that I'm obsessed with. We also got a new dining room table and chairs. We bought a new light fixture for above the dining room that was all off of marketplace. So, like, furniture, so easy. I feel like tools are even usually easy pretty fine i had to buy a like level for work for installing shelving and bought it for ten dollars off marketplace like household items so easy to find in terms of hardest category there was only one category that i actually struggled with that actually like caused me stress and that was birthday gifts for kids like that weren't our immediate family. So my kids, so easy to buy for. Like they don't care, they don't know they were little and they don't know the difference and they're happy with whatever. But during this challenge, our oldest Leo went into grade one or first grade. And I feel like that's when like you start to go to more birthday parties and the expectations for gifts, I feel like a lot of pressure about. Um, I think this maybe depends on your area. And I know that this is definitely, again, like something that I just personally struggled with. It was like more self-inflicted really than anything. The kids don't really care. The parents aren't paying attention. The birthday party is chaos. They don't remember who got what anyway. However, I did feel really self-conscious about this. I came up with a standard gift that I got pretty much every kid, and that was a book. And I could find typically find some pretty good secondhand books that looked brand new, that were brand new. Um, so I was able to do that. And then I got them each one piece of candy, which was a consumable, so like Smarties. And then I each, I gave them money, uh, whatever their age is, like usually in coins. So like say they were turning five, we gave them five little loonies. And <clears throat> it's like fun, easy, does not a ton of clutter to their house, pretty low waste, and again, didn't have to buy anything brand new. That really did work for gifts. Obviously, you can also do gift cards. So it worked out totally fine. And really, since then, like I said, it's been 10 months, and really, have I bought many brand new gi gifts for kids? No. Like the last gift we just did on the weekend, we bought the kid, it was for a seventh birthday for a boy, and we bought him uh, like an O. Henry chocolate bar. We got him a homemade card from Leo, and we got him v gift, a gift card for video games. So V-Bucks, whatever that is. I don't know anything about video games, so I don't even know what I'm buying, but. Okay, our cheats. Overall, yes, we were successful for this challenge. Except for, like I felt like we did really well. We'd honestly, we did, the challenge went better and we did better than I expected and what I planned on. However, there were two specific situations where we cheated and had to buy something brand new. And when I say had to, like, did we? No. But I felt like it was getting to the point where it was worth it for me to break this challenge uh, to make these two purchases. So, number one was sunglasses for Scott, my husband. This was a tricky one because we have bought used sunglasses a thousand times. Like, all of my sunglasses, I think, are used, and I would do that again. However, there, there were sunglasses on Marketplace that he could have bought, but they were all, like brand name like fancier ones that were a hundred dollars plus and really we are more like seventeen dollar sunglasses kind of people we technically could have bought something used um and spent like a little bit of extra and just kept our fingers crossed that scott got a lot of use out of them and we really were trying to be patient we kept looking everywhere we looked at th all the thrift stores we looked on marketplace you know days and days and days scott went like multiple weeks um during the summer without sunglasses <laughs> He was definitely a trooper for this, but it got to the point, I think one day we were like going to the beach and it was July in Ontario, which is hot and sunny. And I felt so bad and I'm like, you know what? I think you need to buy sunglasses. So he drove and we technically didn't even have to pay for them because he went to Canadian Tire, which is like our hard hardware store here in Canada. And we had points, so he was able to get them without spending any money at all. So we still saved money. Um, but we did buy something brand new, so that was definitely one of our cheats. The number two item, brand new item we bought during our challenge was a hair buzzer. So we cut all of our hair at home, and obviously for the two boys, they need like a buzzer, they both have short hair, and so we use a hair buzzer. 
we had one that was like dead. Like it hurt them. <laughs> it hurt when it was like to cut their hair. Oh my gosh, I just realized you can like actually watch the leaves falling in this tree behind me. Like, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Um, anyway, yeah, so we use this hair buzzer got to the point where we're like, can we wait another six months to wait till next year? And we're like, no, we can't. So we did find one on Marketplace and we bought it and it was terrible. And not that there was, and not because it was used, but because it had just been sitting in the box, I think. And it was like even worse than our, <laughs> the one we already owned. So it really got to the point where we're like, we either had to go and start paying for haircuts at the salon or we needed to buy one of these brand new. So we ended up buying a brand new buzzer. I feel like in the end it was worth it for us because we, like I said, we cut all of our hair at home and it was something we use constantly. Okay, our best find. So like I said, we still spent a lot of money. We bought lots of things. I have four favorite purchases of the year. Number one is we bought a car. I mean, we would have bought a used car anyway because that's just how we roll. Scott's car was officially dying and we needed to upgrade. So we found a little Volkswagen Golf, which is like a tiny little car. It's a little grocery getter and he uses it. Scott uses it to get to work every day. I love driving it. I wish it was my car. We paid $10,000 for it I think and we were able to pay cash which was which made the purchase that much sweeter oh my favorite item number two that I absolutely loved was my winter coat I bought a winter coat I think I paid fifty dollars for it and uh, it just like fits so well I absolutely adored it I wore it all winter um, I will wear it again this winter it's so comfortable it fits me so well um, and it was such a good score it was my favorite it was my first used purchase of the year I remember picking it up on New Year's Day and I was super pumped about it here in Ontario a good winter coat is important so I lo lo loved that coat my favorite purchase number three was a little scooter we bought for Leo and the reason I love this I would love this purchase so much was because um, he sort of took it on as his own. He was ready to upgrade to a super cool big boy scooter and we said that's absolutely fine Leo you can do that but you have to spend your own money. So it was like a whole day thing and he went upstairs to his big bank, figured out how much money he had. We looked on Marketplace to find one that he could afford. We po He was in charge of cleaning and his cleaning his old ones. So we post that for sale. And then he went, when he found the one that, new one that he wanted, he went with Scott to pick it up and he was in charge of like handing over the money and picking up the new one. And he absolutely loved it. He used it all summer, he used it last summer. And it was like such a good teaching moment, I feel like for him. And it was super cute to watch like as a mom. Um, so that was definitely one of my favorite purchases of the year. Last favorite purchase was a golf clubs for Scott, which normally I would not care about and not be excited about. How However, it was such, this is such a good little story. He, so Scott is obsessed with golfing. One of the golf courses locally was offering like a free session where they would analyze your swing and they would do all this test to figure out like what clubs you need for you to be the guest, best golf player you can possibly be. Um, and obviously what they're there to do is to sell you their golf clubs, um, which like we both knew going into it and he obviously knew that, but he also loved the idea they could give you a free hour where they, you know, do all these different testing and they, sh they, give you ideas of what would work best so you can be the best. So obviously he goes through all of this and then they send you the golf clubs that are suggested for you and they are like three to $5,000 for these golf clubs. Obviously we were not gonna spend 3,000 or 4,000 or $5,000 on golf clubs and, and Scott knew that. However, I could tell he was like disappointed and I could definitely see that. Like Scott does not ask for a lot of stuff. He doesn't complain really about things. He's not high maintenance by any means, but I could just tell that this really kind of like stuck with him. It really bummed him out uh, and I felt really bad about it. So anyway, weeks, weeks go by and about like six weeks later, maybe a couple months, he sees on marketplace the exact same set of clubs for twelve hundred dollars so like a fraction of the price i think they were missing two clubs or something but overall an entire set for twelve hundred dollars he was then able to sell his existing clubs for a few hundred dollars which he put towards that and voila he had a new set of clubs and he was so happy it worked out so well he had the clubs that he was like dreaming about and he was able to find them secondhand on marketplace and it was such like a it was such a sweet good moment where I felt like it was 
is just like where you feel like you've been patient and you're working for something and it really works out for you. It just makes it feel like all your hard work has paid off. So our final, my final thoughts on the challenge, would I do it again? Heck yes. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. Do I think it shifted our spending, how we operate, how we consume things? Absolutely. Absolutely. Has anyone else ever done this challenge? Have you done something like it? I'm super interested in doing an actual no spend year where we actually buy nothing except for necessities for the entire year. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm super interested in doing it. Um, has anyone else ever done that? Do you have any like suggestions or um, tips for that? I would gladly take them. And if we do it, I will definitely share that here. I hope this inspires you and gives you maybe ideas for challenges you might be interested in doing with your family, or maybe just tiny little tweaks, tiny, tiny little changes you wanna do so that you are creating less clutter in your home, less clutter in the world, and um, saving a little bit of money along the way. As always, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for following along, and I will see you next time. Bye, guys.